The human heart is a miraculous fist-sized feat of engineering. Beating 100,000 times a day, more than 2.5 billion times in a lifetime, pumping 5 quarts of blood a minute, or about 2,000 gallons every day. That's the equivalent of filling up your SUV gas tank 100 times each day. Unfortunately, the human heart is also a machine that's not built to last. When you get these heart failure episodes, what's it like? What does it feel like? It, it feels like, like you can't breathe. And it feels like you're gonna pass out. Dr. Richard Lee is Antoinette Owen's cardiologist and has been treating her for a common elderly heart problem called diastolic heart failure. She has a heart that squeezes normally, but it doesn't fill properly. Both Dr. Lee and his Harvard University colleague, Professor Amy Wagers, joined forces in their labs to tackle this problem. What they found was astonishing. So you found basically that when you joined an old and a young mouse together, the sizes and the structure of the hearts changed. How dramatic was this change? It was amazing enough that, that even I could see it looking at the heart as a whole. And um, even more amazing when you started digging more deeply into the layers of how the individual cells changed, how the genes that the cells expressed changed uh, as a result of this exposure to young blood in the old animal. That something was growth differentiation factor 11, GDF11, a protein circulating in blood that makes an old mouse heart young again in four weeks. So right now we're seeing the next step yes. of GDF11. Here. Science in action right here. <laughs> now mice don't get heart disease like humans do, but they might give us clues about how to fight it. Here at Harvard, researchers like Dr. Lee and Dr. Wagers are trying to follow those clues, trying to solve a cardiac crisis. One day, healing mice hearts might help heal human ones. We developed a, a hypothesis that there was something in the blood because the blood has access to all of these different cells and tissues and might be able to communicate these aging signals. There must be thousands of factors that circulate in the blood. So how did you isolate this one protein that you didn't even know you were looking for? <laughs> we developed a collaboration with a biotech company called Somologic in Colorado. The technology allowed researchers to use a specific marker in the blood to help identify the protein. It's kind of like having a barcodes on thousands of post-it notes, and that by using those different colored post-it notes and finding the right things, then they can pick out and check the barcode and see what it was. It's incredibly important doing these kinds of discovery approaches because it really is looking for a needle in a haystack. It took the researchers five years to isolate GDF-11. The way I've heard it put is that when you discover something at least as dramatic as, as you two did, yeah. for that fleeting moment before you publish it, you know something that no one else right. on the planet knows. That's got to feel fantastic. Yeah. Because we've been such good friends, it made it awfully special. I think I jumped up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wagers, I know that you have kind of a odd way of celebrating when you have papers <laughs> published. Can you tell me a little bit about... I don't think there's anything odd about it. <laughs> Dr. Wagers celebrated the GDF-11 discovery by taking another leap of faith, this time from 10,000 feet. So I declined to <laughs> <laughs> go to, um, as I would say, jump out of a perfectly good airplane. All the researchers acknowledge that they still have their work cut out for them. I view this study as hopeful, but I am cautiously hopeful. I, for one, uh, have uh, not seen uh, any study to date that shows these dramatic changes in the um, uh, thickening of uh, the heart and the appearance of heart muscle cells. In the meantime, diastolic heart failure still has no cure and continues to be one of the leading causes of hospital admission in the U.S. When we're young children, our heart is a very compliant structure. It behaves almost like a party balloon. As you put volume into it, the heart is compliant and can handle that volume. And by the time 
that human beings enter their 70s and their 80s, the heart will behave more like a leather purse. And so, yes, I would say there is a pressing need to come up with therapies that can alter the progression of this disease process. What is the next step in looking at how this protein that you isolated affects the heart or even the rest of the body? We do know that this protein circulates in the blood of, of humans, and we know that it, it likely has some relationship with disease. So the big thing in the heart is how quickly can we make the story really supportive that actually changing this in humans is a good idea, and that's going to require a lot of hard work that we'll do as fast as we can. Only on Al Jazeera America. A team of scientists are taking their inspiration from nature. Technology, it's a vital part of who we are. They had some dynamic fire behavior. And what we do. Transcranial direct stimulation. Don't try this at home. Techno's team of experts show you how the miracles of science. This is my selfie. What can you tell me about my future? Can affect and surprise us. Sharks like affection. Catch new episodes of Techno on Al Jazeera America. Check your local listings or visit aljazeera.com.